All right, so I'm Chris Kemps. Uh, there's my Twitter tweets and all that, and blog, all that. Do those things. All right, moving on, though. So, we've got our classic uh, War Horse Society that we've all got, right? And things are getting a little heated. Things are getting a little crazy, right? So they've got to prepare for battle even further. They've got to up their production schedule, uh, some of the special uh, Warrior Horse gear that's totally not made up on the spot. Okay, so we go to our gear list, right? So now we've got this. So what we've done is we've created a series of flows, right? So we've got flows associated with our gear. Let's make that a little bigger here. Whoa, there we go. All right, so if I select an item with the flow menu, we wait a while. <laughs> we'll see some flow. There they are, look at that. We've got things to manage the state of our gear, right? So you might write that as a single flow that looks at, uh, say, a stage of development, right, and branches off from there. But even then, you want to prompt users, right? Because that's not obvious. What one do I pick for the item I've selected? Right, so let's make that a little easier. So in the past, we've done some things where we've added a nice flow button. We're going to do that really quickly, then we'll customize it further. So when we do that, we're going to go here, we're going to add a format-only column. And the way you do that is you just simply pick a calculated column, and you're going to say equals, in formula, you say equals, quotation, double quotation mark, double quotation mark. It's a very complicated formula. But that's about it. Hit OK. Now we have a column that can only be used in the display. So it's not going to get in the way when you're editing items or you're creating new items. Uh, and we can add a format to it. So I'm going to come down here in the column settings, format this column. And we over here on our, oh, uh, pin it or unpin it, I don't know. Anybody know? Let's do this. There we go. All right, we go over here. So we've got our classic uh, kind of samples repo. I assume someone will paste the link in chat. All right, so our SP dev list formatting GitHub, where we've got uh, 60 samples now. Tons of stuff to choose from. And if we go to our column samples, we've had this one for a while. We've got the generic start flow. All you've got to do is you grab this JSON right here, and we're going to cut and paste it right in there. All this is doing, for a very quick recap, is it creates a button as a custom action here of execute flow. And we do this JSON that's been escaped to fit inside JSON because JSON can't handle sub JSON. Okay, but the idea is here we put in here the ID of the flow we want to run. We'll go over that in a second. And the rest of the stuff just makes it look real pretty with the buttons and text. So we grab that, we head back to our War Warriors site, paste that in, and preview that. We get this nice, it's flow time button, right? And if we have the right flow, see, we got to come up here to flow. So we'll figure out to say destroy gear. The way you get that flow ID, you just come up here to this URL. You see right there between the words, uh, let's see, flows. Oh, I don't know, I've got the zoom master here. There we go. Oh, oh there we go. Between flows, wow, this beautiful thing right there. You're going to grab that sucker. You don't have to memorize it. This is a family show. Yeah, family show. This is sucker bad. I'm so sorry. Paste that in there. Boom. So save that. We'll close that. Now, if I refresh this list, right, now when I click on it, right, I can launch that particular flow. Woo! Right? Woo. It's going to launch that destroy gear. So that's cool, but I've got three different flows I want to show based on this stage right here. Right? So I only want to do the right one. So I can start to do custom things, right? So I can change how that looks. I can change some of that text conditionally based on another column in the view. So we take a look at that. We've got column settings format this column. We'll just do this one over here. All right, so the easiest one is text content, right? So instead of it's flow time, we want to give the user a little more hint of what's happening. Right? So we say equals if, and then we'll reference our stage column using the internal name. All right, so we say if it's blank, then, you know, that's deploy, right? If it's a little, a little sub if, it's like a switch statement, right? So if stage is, yeah, let's see. Develops. I don't know what it is. Uh, we got my notes here. Uh, developed. There we go. Development. All right, so this is all I did. It's development. Then you're going to want to do uh, deploy, destroy, whatever. All right, you get the I forgot my things here. Hey, oh, there it is. It is development, deploy. Got it, guys? Everyone's paying attention. Deploy. And we'll say develop. This is incredibly important. We're going to copy and paste to fix all this in just a minute. All right, so deploy, and then otherwise we want to destroy. Perfect. So we preview that. Hey, look at that. So now we've got custom text, right? It's still launching the same flow. It's still doing the same thing. All right, so if your flow is doing conditional logic, right, you're just prompting users so they know why they're clicking that, right? But some of these, maybe we don't want to show a button at all, right? Like, 
the gear has been destroyed, there's nothing more to do it, like it's out of, out of the loop, right? So how do we get rid of that? So this is the idea of conditionally hiding or showing entire elements. Right, so you can only apply logic with inside properties, so you can't do it to include properties or exclude properties, you can't do it to include or exclude elements. But you can come up here to the display element, right? So I'm just going to say display, and then we'll say another nice conditional, right? So equal to if. So if the stage, right, equals destroyed, well, then we want to say none for the display. Otherwise, we'll see here. All right? Now, if we figure that, we see that the button goes away when we shouldn't have it. So the user is not prompted to launch something when they shouldn't be launching anything. Okay? Now, again, we can start to jump in and go through each one of these. When we go through, we can change the icon, we can change the color, all this other stuff. But the more important thing is changing the actual flow. So it's not going to be super complicated. It's the exact same logic. The key thing to note here is, although this looks a little crazy, this is just a string, which means we can do our same string concatenation conditionally with all those different IDs, right? So we just wrap that up, and right? so we can set it equals if, and now we just put all that in single quotes. Yeah, we find the end of it. There it is. So now all we're doing is we're doing the exact same kind of logic. So if stage equals so on and so forth. Now this one has several IDs, so I'm just going to, at this point, I'm going to cheat. So if we go back, so we've got this start flow. There's a brand new sample called start flow conditionally. So see if you can find it. Very exciting. Click on it. We're going to do the exact same thing. And the key difference here is it just has all that same logic, that conditional logic that we're taking a look at with the text, with the icon, doing it here with the same with the display. We're even doing it with the classes so we can do different colors. And here's the key, right? So you guys can see this. The ID. So we're building it first. So we're building that escape action parameters. We're building the ID. And we're just checking that same stage variable to figure out which ID from which of our flows we're going to pop in there. Okay? Now, one thing to note is that one of the very few uh, properties you cannot set conditionally with an expression is action up here. So if you need to set action conditionally, say maybe you want to do edit props, right, versus um, display the item, default click, you're going to have to create that as a separate element altogether and use the display to choose which element to turn on or off because you cannot do that inside action. But you can do it with action parameters, so that's what we're going to do. So we'll go back to our site, copy all that, paste over it. We're going to preview that. Woo! All right, so we're going to save it because the first time you click the button, it doesn't work. So don't be more alarmed if when you just preview it, the button doesn't work, refresh it. All right? So now when we hit develop, we get develop gear, right? And if we come down here and we hit deploy, we get deploy gear. So the whole idea is I, as an end user, I don't have to click here, go up to the flow menu, and figure out what am I actually doing at this stage. You can prompt users through an entire process. All right, I'm using one column to do that, but you could use quite a few different things, right? Is it completed already? You know, is it on hold? You can make some pretty complicated logic, and you can then also handle that logic in your flow, but prompt you use correct. Okay. So, uh, quick question, actually, because we have checks on the table on the front as well, and this is a good, there was a good question on the iron window and the, and the chat, and we'll come back on the other questions, hopefully we'll have time for Q&A at the end. Uh, but there was a question re related on, could I actually start the flow without the left panel? So directly on the on the clicking the button, and I'll keep the microphone for chats just in case. Not. So, so this is integrated with uh, how flows are executed in SharePoint. So the panel is the way how we treat the experience of executing a flow against a resource in SharePoint. So that's what we kind of get. If you want to do it in new tab, um, I don't know the exact command what you need to do, but you may not be using the uh, inbuilt command to launch the flow, execute command in the uh, formatter. You have to use some URL link instead. Getting an HTTP app Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So just to recap, uh, all right, so conditional logic for properties can only conditionally set the value. So that's something that comes up a lot where people are trying to say, I only want to include the colors, you know, text color. Right, when it makes sense to include it. No, you have to always include the property and then you conditionally set it. Right, so you can set it to inherit, you can set it to empty strings if you don't want to actually set that value right, in your else condition. Uh, so you always have to include or exclude properties, or you can't conditionally. Yeah, you read it. Okay. Now, let's say for elements, so it's not a thing. You cannot conditionally include or hide an element. So the key there is create kind of an empty parent, div, or other container, and then inside the children, conditionally turn them on or off which is 
okay in some conditions. If you're getting really complicated, that gets to be a real nuisance. So hopefully we'll get that eventually, but for now, that's how you handle that. So especially in the case of trying to do a different action. Okay, and uh, last thing here. So go check out the docs. This is the repo against 60 plus samples. Go cut and paste those things, customize them, submit some new ones. And then we've got to write up on each of those things. So the first part, where I showed you how to do a format only column, kind of through that, through that real quick. It's a conditional column, that's that LF format only. And if you want to find a little more about how to do the multi-flow, where do you copy that ID and all that written up for you, that's in the multi-flow. That's it for me. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs>